50. I am going to take that Constitution and shove it down their throat until they choke on it, until they become compliant with the provisions in the Constitution. I am not going to take no, and neither are the people. Hi there, and welcome to Heartland Liberty. I'm your host, Dan Meredith. We have an interesting guest tonight, Mr. John Gentry. Thanks for being here, John. Thanks for having me, Dan. John, uh, you are, uh, I guess, most importantly at this time of the year, you're a candidate for governor of Tennessee. That's right. I've been out campaigning hard, and, and my work is about teaching the people how to take control of our government. I mean that very literally, the people having a direct voice in government on the floors of the houses. I, I mean that very literal sense. And I, um, we we're going to talk about that and this, this right of remonstrance right. that we have and taking down rampant corruption that we have in government. We have judges holding prohibited offices expressly prohibited offices in the Constitution, and those offices are used to protect corruption. Right, and, and people, we, people don't seem to, to care about that. And I know there are a lot of viewers that think that, well, there's nobody to vote for. It just seems like everything is steamrolled through. You've got Governor Lee for conservatives. There's just Governor Lee. You go in there and you press the button and there's no one else there. And uh, I think, John, you might be an alternative. Absolutely. I'm the only alternative. I mean, when I look at Martin running on the Dem side and Lee on the Republican side, they're both constitutionally incompetent. They literally are. What we saw under the Lee administration is a rubber stamp of a stream, mounds of corrupt pretended legislation that Lee did not veto a single item. Hmm. And the power the power of veto in the executive branch has been used once in like the last five governors. Wow. And that was Haslam saying that the, that the Bible uh, cannot be the state book. If I'm in office as governor, I am going to wear out my veto stamp, sending back all of that corrupt legislation back to them and also putting out to the people why I'm not going to sign it. And I want the people to stand with me and call their senator and call their representative and instruct them not to override Governor Gentry's veto. I'm going to shut down the corruption that is going on in this state. And this is just one example of how I'm going to do it. So what's the veto for? The veto is for the governor to stop legislation that shouldn't Right. There shouldn't be passed. Right. There's this and so is, so if if there's the veto isn't used, that means that the legislature, everything they do, is right. So well, it's it's waving his hand over it right. essentially. So how it works in in our Tennessee Constitution is legislation has to pass through both the House and the Senate, and then it's presented to the governor. And the governor has 10 days, that's all, 10 days to state in writing why he doesn't sign. If he doesn't state why he won't sign it within 10 days, then it becomes law anyway. So the governor has to actively say, no, I'm not signing this and here's why, and then send it back. The problem here is that they're proposed 1,500 pieces of legislation every single year. And they pass close to a thousand of them. Almost two thirds of it gets enacted into law. The sheer fact of that much legislation is evidence of the corruption that is in that legislation. And the founders aggrieved in the Declaration of Independence for giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. Pretended legislation looks good. Read the bill caption, because that's all they talk about down there is the bill caption. When you get into the nitty gritty of the language written by legislative attorneys, it's almost always for corrupt purpose, somebody to make more money, somebody to have more power, some more benefit for somebody. And we as a people, I mean, I'm teaching you how to do this, but I want the people to start overseeing government and standing up to their senators and representatives and say, what are you thinking here? Why are you proposing this legislation? Why are you listening to these special interests? Why are you yeah. putting this stuff forward? And when, when the people start standing up, then we can start taking some of this down when I'm gone. And I think there's two problems here that, that I see first. Uh, we send people up to the General Assembly who don't know the Constitution. I mean, they swear 
that they're going to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and the state of Tennessee. But if you were to ask people, have you read the Constitution? Most of them would say, no, they haven't even read it. Much less really know it. They haven't even read it. So they don't know it. And the people that vote, they just don't care. They haven't read it and they don't care. They're just happy that they get sort of what they want. They don't care if anybody's going by the rules, which is the Constitution. They just care. Let's talk that about. If, let's yeah, talk okay, about let's that. Talk about let's that. talk about the Constitution and why it is so important. The Tennessee Constitution. Half the people don't even know that we have a state constitution. Mm -hmm. That state constitution is superior to the federal constitution, and I think any other state constitution. Thomas Jefferson said it's the least imperfect. Mm -hmm. And and not knowing that constitution is everything that's gone wrong. So in Article 1, Section 1 of the Tennessee Constitution, all power is inherent in the people. Let's read that as you, as you quote it. Let's take and, a look and at the, that. And the, and, the, and, and the government is instituted for our peace, safety, and happiness. And to that end, they have an unalienable, indefeasible right to reform, alter, or abolish government in such manner as they may think proper. We have a constitutional right to reform government, even abolish it if we want to. How do we do that? You know, we look at this and we think, oh, this is like we did when we declared independence. We take up arms. No, the, the founders laid down a peaceful process. And we look at Article 1, Section 31 of the Tennessee Constitution, and the people have the right to exercise sovereignty. The right of sovereignty is the right to, it's the power to make law to say what the law is. And, and where we get down to the meat of this, and, and this, is, this is really the heart of my work above all else, is putting the voice of the people directly in government. It's, the, it's called the right of remonstrance. And this right has been so oppressed, it has been wiped from our collective knowledge. You ask anybody, in the First Amendment says we have a right to petition for redress of grievance. How do you exercise that? What does that right mean? How do you exercise it? When we look at the Tennessee Constitution, Article 1, Section 23, it says that citizens have a right uh, to assemble peacefully for their common good uh, and, and to instruct our representatives. And we're going to talk a little bit more to instruct our representatives and to apply to those invested with the powers of government for redress of grievance or other proper purpose by address or remonstrance. So that's that's an important this uh, is this is the cornerstone yeah. right and this i is, as a citizen my duty is to instruct those people you have a constitutional right to do it power is inherent in the people now how well, let's break this down first and then i'm going to give you an example of how i'm going to teach the people and harness the power in the of the people exercising this right over government. And I'm going to walk you through an example of how mm -hmm. we're going to do that. But let's break this down. We have a right to instruct our representatives and to apply to those invested with the powers of government. Who's invested with the powers of government? Governor Lee, the House, the Senate, judges, county commissioners. The, the framers of our Constitution were intentionally broad. If you look at Section 31, it says giving respect to the Constitution of North Carolina. North Carolina Constitution, you can only petition for redress of grievance and only to the General Assembly. That's what's in the North Carolina Constitution. We came from North Carolina. The Tennesseans knew what was in the North Carolina Constitution because they were North Carolinians before they become Tennesse Tennesseans. A lot of them, a lot of them came from Virginia. But there's, their constitution says redress and only to the General Assembly. Ours says those invested with the powers of government. And it doesn't say just redress. It says or other proper purposes. And most importantly, it says by address or remonstrance. You have a constitutional right to present a proper purpose or grievance by oral address to the body of the House and the body of the Senate. That is incredibly powerful. And I'm the first person since the year 1850 to exercise that right here in the state of Tennessee. And in 39 seconds that my petition was announced on the House floor, the entire Board of Judicial Conduct, more than a dozen corrupt judges were removed from office. 
That wow. is incredible that a single citizen shut down an entire corrupt agency. And that agency was reconstituted from all judges to eight judges, four attorneys, and six citizens. So government is making an attempt to provide accountability back to our corrupt judiciary because of John Gentry. One citizen that knows how to assert his rights and he knows what his rights are in the Constitution. So by address or remonstrance, you have a constitutional right to orally address any of those invested with the powers of government. So let's put this, do we have time to put this in practical app? One minute, 38 seconds, and then we're gonna break. Okay, when we come back, when we come back from this break, Stay tuned on this because I am going to give you an example of actual exercise of this right by all the people. And we're going to talk about what is the right to instruct and what does it mean to exercise the right of sovereignty. And I'm telling you guys out there watching this, stay tuned because this is how we're going to take back our country lawfully and peacefully and we're going to get it done the first time. That's what this is the heart of my work right here. Great information. The people have the right to exercise sovereignty. The government is by the people. It's of the people. And uh, John is explaining to us that we have the responsibility to instruct those people. We, now, we how do we do that two. if we don't have any uh, uh, connection, any uh, uh, any time that we ever come in contact with those people. If we just sit at home and listen to what they say, how are we going to instruct them? We've got to come in contact right. with them, right? Right. We're going we're, we're, we're to walk through exactly what that process is. Okay. But when you talk about duty, when you talk about duty, let's look at Article 2, Section 2 of the Tennessee Constitution. Okay. The doctrine of non-resistance is absurd. Wow. Slavish and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. Okay. We're going to look at that when we come back. Heartland Liberty, I'm your host, Dan Meredith, and we're here with John Gentry. We'll be right back. Meredith, your host, and we're here with a special guest, John Gentry. Thanks for being with us, John. John, you're a candidate for governor of the state of Tennessee and also pretty much of an expert on the Tennessee Constitution and a lot of the things that deal with uh, citizens dealing with the state government and how to appeal to the state government if you don't think things are going right. And especially if sometimes we think we just appeal to our uh, representatives, but sometimes they're not very uh, 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 answerable to us. So uh, let's go to the uh, next thing. We were talking about uh, the uh, uh, section two of- Yeah, so in our constitution, and just to kind of recap from our mm -hmm. earlier discussion, we have an unalienable, indecisible right to reform government. I mean, literally, that is the words in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. we, the people have a right to reform government. Unalienable, can't transfer that right. Indefeasible, can't be violated. And we have a right to instruct our representatives, and we have the right to exercise sovereignty uh, affirmed in Article One, Section 31. And, and sec Article One, Section 2, it says, the doctrine of non-resistance is absurd. Uh, that, you can go to uh, that on the computer. The doctrine of non-resistance is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. So for the people out there who are in this coma of apathy and distraction and ignorance, it is slavish and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. So I'm working trying to teach citizens how to become competent citizens again. Right. This is the heart of my work to teach this constitution. This constitution is our shield and mm -hmm. our armor and the declaration of rights is our sword. This is how we take back government is asserting rights that have been so oppressed that, that we don't even know we have these rights. Yeah. Let, so, let's, let's go over that. You, you, you mentioned it there, the doctrine of non-resistance, just sitting back, we're not gonna yeah. resist. Whatever they say, whatever they do, it's absurd. We just, we just don't it's, do it. It's and slavish. It's absurd to just sit back and not resist. It's slavish. It's to the destruction of the good and happiness of mankind. Our Constitution said that, and right, the the section above it said it's our right to basically do away with the government. 
Or, well, I don't want to do, we need government. Yeah, that, yeah, that, I mean, to we, change the government. But we definitely need to reform government. Right. So here's how I'm going to put this in practice, and I'm going to teach the people how to exercise this right. So Article 1, Section 23, we have the right to apply to those invested with the powers of government for redress or proper purpose by address. We're going to exercise that right, and how and why we're going to exercise that right, I guarantee term limits. I literally guarantee term limits. Poll after poll, 82% of the people in this country want term limits. Does it matter your race? Does it matter your political affiliation? It doesn't matter however you self-identify. 82% of the people in this country want term limits. We are sick and tired of career politicians who do no good for us. So what, we're going, what I'm going to do is, is, as governor, I'm going to go out to the people and I'm going to explain to them why we need term limits. And when I show the people the corruption in our judiciary and in our legislative houses that is caused by entrenched politicians, I think I'm going to get 95% of the people. So I'm going to have 95% of the people in Tennessee sign, co-signing a remonstrance with me that I am going to orally present to the houses. Now, when we talk about this right to instruct, I have the transcripts from the first Congress discussing the Bill of Rights. And in the Federal Bill of Rights, they talked about should we include the right to instruct representatives? Several, several of the 13 colonies wanted the right to instruct their representatives. And they talked about it a whole day. They decided not to because they thought it would lead to factionalism, civil war. They decided not to put it in the Federal Bill of Rights. But it's in, it's in uh, 13, 13 state constitutions. This right to remonstrance is yes, in 13. In, in, in 13 states by oral address. And, and the right to instruct our representatives. Not every state has the right to instruct representatives. Tennessee does. Representative Jerry, Elbridge Jerry, on August 15th, 17, 1797, to a committee of the whole, he said, do gentlemen not conceive where the instructions may be so general as to come from all the people? If they do, it is the sovereign will for gentlemen will not contend that sovereignty presides in the legislature. The friends and patrons of this Constitution have always held sovereignty is vested in the people and they do not part with it on any occasion. And to say sovereignty vests in the people and they have not a right to instruct is absurd to the last degree. So now from that discussion, we know, like, what is this right to instruct? And they're talking about, well, does this bind us? Do we have to obey the instructions? And what they came out with is, is no, they don't, have to, they don't have to obey the instructions. That's up to their conscience. But if all of us want it, then it is the sovereign will that they obey those instructions because that's an exercise of sovereignty. So I'm going to get 95% of the people to, to co-sign a remonstrance with me saying we want term limits. I'm going to have the legislation writ out, written out and I'm going to have a constitutional amendment written out for everybody to see and I say I want you to sign it. So this is after your governor. After I'm going, well, I'll go, eventually I'm going to have big okay. enough reach. I'm going to do this anyway. Okay. But if we can get me in as governor, I'm going to fast track this. Okay. And we're going to have it very soon after I'm elected. But I will, I will take all of those signatures and I will present that the governor in, in Article Article Three of the Tennessee Constitution. The governor has the power to convene the General Assembly. Y'all get down here. Senators, representatives, get down to the General Assembly. We got some business to take care of. And I'm going to present them with the instructions from the people exercising their right to reform government, exercising their right to make that application by oral address to the legislative houses, exercising our sovereignty in Section 31. We're asserting these rights and I'm going to present this to both houses and say that people are not asking you we're instructing you we are exercising sovereignty in this matter this is not an option you're going to sign this legislation you're going to approve it today 
And for any of you that, that vote no against this, one of my friends is going to call a roll, roll call vote on this. One of the members of the House is going to say, I want a roll call on who votes no. So the people are going to see exactly who doesn't want term limits. And then I'm going to file in proposed articles of impeachment for those members who are acting in violation of their oath to not support the Constitution of this state, which says that the people have the right to exercise sovereignty. I am going to take that Constitution and shove it down their throat until they choke on it, until they become compliant with the provisions in the Constitution. I am not going to take no, and neither are the people. No matter who we elect, in office. They all say, Bill Lee, 10 for 10. Here's the 10 things I want to do if I'm elected. One of them was term limits. We haven't heard a thing out of mm -hmm. him, have we? And we often hear congressmen saying, oh, I'll work for term limits. So how, do, well, how, does, that, how does that play out? So you get one guy who stand up and he, he sponsors a bill, gets shut down in subcommittee, doesn't even make it to the floor. This right of remonstrance goes straight to the body. It goes straight to the floor. And I'm going to show you. He's going to edit in this video uh, where we're showing you my remonstrance, the first time since the year 1850, heard on the House floor, causing more than a dozen corrupt judges to get removed from office. This 39 seconds is literally shaking the foundation of corruption not just here in Tennessee, but nationwide. As a result of my exercise, they're rewriting legislative books to fend off my attack. They can change their rules all they want. The Tennessee Constitution and the federal Constitution are the supreme law. And yeah. as governor, the governor is vested with a supreme executive power in the Tennessee Constitution. The definition of executive power is to bring the law into effect. And that Tennessee Constitution is our supreme law, and I will bring that law into effect. I will shut them down in the General Assembly from corrupt legislation. I will restore the form of government in our Tennessee Constitution where judges are prohibited from holding offices. I will not let them legislate until they re restore the form of government that allows the people to petition government. I want them to welcome, hear, and decide petitions from the people. And for myself as governor, I'm going to have a petition and remonstrance day where citizens can come unannounced to the Capitol and petition me for redress. Or they can present to me their proper purpose. We need a new road. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's gather energy this way. Let's let's explore minerals here in Tennessee. Right. We have many proper purposes that can come yeah. from the people. So I'll have the petition to remonstrate. So say. you've got that on YouTube, the 40 seconds, yes. 38 seconds. Let's go to that now. Then we're going to go to break, and then we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Next order, Mr. Clark. Petitions and memorials. Mr. Clark. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Rule 15, we have a brief statement regarding a petition of remonstrance statement filed by Representative Holsey. It reads, I'm approaching the Tennessee House Chief Clerk on behalf of Mr. John Gentry with this petition and statement. Involves a petition of grievances. One, unconstitutional and void statutes. Two, failure to address grievances. Three, judicial reform. Four, reinstitution of constitutionally guaranteed rights Signed, Bud Halsey, Tennessee State Representative. Meredith Heartland Liberty, we're back with our guest, John Gentry. Wow, this is just fascinating, the things that we've gone over uh, tonight and in, in the last show about the Tennessee Constitution and specifically this remonstrous concept. Uh, you, we, we just closed out looking at the 38, 39 second video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, the question I have about that, now they read that and then I think the question that people would have is, okay, so what? Did, when they read it, do they just say, well, okay, that's John and then they move, oh, move on or what is supposed to happen next? Yeah, and so historically, and I've, I've gone down to the Tennessee archives and I've read what happened back in the 1800s and what would happen is, is this, the petition would be presented 
like not just the announcement of okay. it, the brief. So there the was brief. a long petition so, and then this announcement. So they would present that petition to the body and then the body would resolve and they would send it to the, they used to have a propositions and grievances committee. That's where most of them went, but they had a claims committee you know, if your property was damaged or there was one, a, 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 a citizen had transported a prisoner on behalf of the state and he wanted to get paid. He got sent to the claims committee. And then the committees would deliberate on these and then they would make a recommendation back to the body and then the body would vote. This is how it is supposed to work. Government is oppressing that part of it and they're just announcing it. But you say, okay, so what? They just announced this. This literally shook the foundations of corruption nationwide. That they are rewriting legislative rule books as a result of that 39 seconds. And here in Tennessee, they removed more than a dozen corrupt judges. Corrupt judge Chris Kraft, he's still on the bench out in Memphis, that, that that corrupt judge was removed from the Board of Judicial Conduct along with all the rest of them. Disciplinary counsel Timothy Tachenza, been there 10 years, gone from, from one citizen. So in the earlier segment, you know, we talked about, I'm, gonna, I'm going to harness the power of the people and I'm going to bring all of us together, instructing our representatives that we're going to have term limits, asserting our right in Article 1 to reform government, asserting our right in Section 31 to exercise our sovereignty, and our rights in Section 23 to make that application by oral address to those invested with the powers of government, our General Assembly, and we're, we're going to get term limits here in Tennessee. Now, here's, here's how this is going to reverberate. You know, when I have my petition and remonstrance day, Governor Gentry, come down and talk to me and tell me what your grievances are face to face or give me your proper purpose. What do you think is going to happen in Arkansas, Georgia, Kentucky, yeah. Alabama? They're going to say, why isn't our governor here petitions? Mm -hmm. It's going to set an example. When we have term limits here in Tennessee, what do you think is going to happen in the several states? When they say, look what Tennessee did. The people asserted their sovereignty, instructed their, re their representatives, and asserted their right to reform government. We can do that too here in Kentucky or Arizona or wherever. And when we have the several states... <clears throat> take control. The people take control of their government <clears throat> and put in term limits, exercising constitutional rights. We're going to come together, the several states, and we're going to petition the United States Congress, because this right is in the First Amendment. The right to petition for redress of grievances is in the First Amendment. We're going to show this entire country how to exercise. This, this right is literally, it is the cornerstone of our constitutional system. Uh, court case, the United States v. Krukashank. Fundamental to a government, Republican in character, is the right of the people to petition. 1883, Michigan Supreme Court Justice. He said, the right of petition, I'm surprised we got to write it down. He literally said that. I'm surprised we have to write this right down. He said, for this right to be oppressed to the people, it would have to become so servile and so debased as to no longer deserve any of the privileges of free men. Hmm. That's quite an admonishment. He's saying, if you let this right be oppressed, and we have, nobody knows about it, right? You don't deserve any privileges. You don't even deserve to vote. Shut up and do what you're told. You're, you're yeah. slavish. Just do what hmm. you're told. <clears throat> so my work is to empower the people, to teach them how to exercise power. This right of assembly is not protesting in the streets. Government has no duty to listen to street protesters. But they have a duty to hear our address, that we have a constitutional right to address those invested with the powers of government. And they do have a duty to decide. They can, just, they can say yes or no, unless you're exercising the sovereign will. Yeah. But on a petition of a large number of citizens or a single citizen, they can say yes or no up to their, up, up to their own conscience yeah. and within the confines of the Constitution.
Now, I've heard, uh, talked to another uh, or an attorney about this, and he says, well, what would happen uh, if everybody in Tennessee is doing this? I mean, you've got thousands of people wanting to address the assembly. So what's your answer to that? Well, I don't, personally, I don't think that, I mean, if you're going to the General Assembly the way I did, you've got a serious grievance that needs attention. If, if you feel so angered that you need justice, that you have to exercise this right, it's probably pretty bad. Now, when I first exercised this right, I, I, before I did it, I emailed the entire General Assembly. 99 representatives, 32 senators, and a whole bunch of legislative staff. And I said, I'm going to be exercising this right the first time since the year 1850. And I encourage you to welcome this opportunity to embrace it and to set an example for the rest of this country. And I had uh, corrupt Senator Stevens, and I, and I named these guys publicly. I'm not afraid of them. He's incompetent. Senator Stevens, who's an attorney, by the way, and he said, what your attorney told you. Well, if we, if we did this, there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands. I wrote back to the General Assembly, I copied all of them with Senator Stevens' email, and I said, rebuke your colleague. He's saying, if, if, if we, hit, if we re restore this right, there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands, of aggrieved citizens. So what Senator Stevens is saying is, there's so many, we will hear none. Hmm. And that is the definition of tyranny that you will not hear grievances from your people. I hope that people get Stevens out of office because he has evidence that he doesn't care about the people of this state. He doesn't care that you are aggrieved with your rights violated. He doesn't care. Right, so I guess, I guess if the argument is that this is correct and constitutional, but we can't do it because there would be so many people, that's not a very good argument. No, the means, argument should be, you're wrong, it's not constitutional. Not, you're right, but there would be too many people doing it. Right. That's, that's, not, a now, good, now that's there, not a good argument. Now, there may be, in the beginning, there may be a lot of petitions. Mm -hmm. There may be. We have, we have so many people that have ha had their children stolen under color of law through corrupt courts with the Department of Child Services putting out false and unsupported allegations. Can you imagine having your children stolen from you mm -hmm. based on false and unsupported allegations? Happens every day in the state. All right. We have people going through divorce court where they have these corrupt proceedings, case steering, where the judges are colluding with attorneys from one or both sides right. to extort both the parties under color of law. Right. Yeah, we've got a lot of those yeah. that are out there. They need to be heard. They need to be redressed. Redressed does not mean making millions of dollars like a class action lawsuit. It means make things right. Yeah. Make me whole. That's I, know for, I know for a fact, I've, I've talked to attorneys before that have said that this whole system where men are accused of violence and get sent to jail and they just plead out because no one wants to fight something like that and then they realize later on that that sticks with them the rest of their life yeah. and they can't own a gun and all this and it's, large I mean, numbers of those are just people get peed off at one another, and, they call the cops. And the reason and that it. we have this, the, you know, this is tyranny and oppression of rights that's going on. And the reason that we have this is because this right is oppressed. Mm -hmm. Corruption cannot stand in the face of the right of remonstrance. And if these kind of things that are occurring, if people that were behind this knew that, hey, if we continue to do this, people are gonna bring it before the General Assembly, they would start saying, ah, oh, we can't do this. We can't, we can't cover this up. We would have to change the laws because otherwise these people are gonna be, as you said, that that uh, representative said, there's gonna be hundreds of these people standing down here, yes. standing in line. This, we th can't handle that. This, th this right, common and frequent petitions, going back to the 12th century, mid medieval England, common and frequent petitions took the place of prolonged discontent. How much prolonged discontent do we have in this country right now? A lot.
It took the place of prolonged discontent and the presentation of a long list of grievances at the point of a sword. This right took the place of violence like we saw in the George Floyd protests. It took the place. Now, let's, let's put this another practical example of, of uh, proper, properly using this right. Half the people in this country do not believe that we had a fair election in the 2020 presidential election. Right. So what Trump did, and he's incompetent on this too because he doesn't know about this right. But, but this would be the proper exercise of this right. He went to the courts and, and filed fraud lawsuits. Those courts dismissed the case without discovery and without evidentiary hearing, and that is a denial of due process. Those cases were wrongfully dismissed. Clarence, Just, or Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice, he said, what are we waiting for? Why are we not hearing Trump's appeal? Mm -hmm. What Trump should have done Instead of calling thousands of people to Washington, D.C., which did not end up good, no matter how you look at it, it was not good that, that we had so many citizens breach the Capitol. And, and oh, you know, most of those guys are good guys. They just took the wrong path, and now they're treated like criminals incarcerated. So it didn't end up good for anybody. It didn't solve anything. It made matters worse. What Trump should have done is written up a memorial and remonstrance, attached affidavits, attached his evidence to it, and filed it with the clerk of the House. United States House of Representatives, Rule 12, Section 3, a member having a petition shall file it with the clerk, shall as a duty. And his petition gets read on the floor, just like mine was announced. Hmm. And they send it to committee, and he gets to present his evidence, and it's on ESPN. Wow. And then everybody says, well, he's full of beans. Or, wow, we got a problem with election corruption. Yeah. And then it goes back to the bodies. Now, the redress, because it, it's a petition for redress of grievance. So the redress, I want to do over. Or yeah. I want an audit of the results, and it would have satisfied the question that still hang angers this country today. Right. It would have resolved it peacefully and lawfully in the process that was set forth by the founders going back to a process in the 12th century. Right. We've got a cut right now. We're going to go to a break and be right back, and then we're going to talk about maybe how we the people can use this. Absolutely. Maybe to address some grievances we have. We'll be right back. I'm Dan Meredith. This is Heartland Liberty. Thanks for watching.